With classes in crisis communication, influence, and data presentation, Gonzaga University's online Master's in Communication and Leadership equips you with the tools you need to communicate clearly and encourage creativity in any industry. Concentrations in digital media, strategic communication, and global leadership allow you to customize your degree. Visit gonzaga.edu slash communication and learn why a master's degree from Gonzaga can help you take your career to the next level. That's gonzaga.edu slash communication. In episode 82 of Pop Culture Weekly, I talk with the one and only Leslie Grossman from American Horror Story. Then I talk with the legendary Diane Warren. Let's go! Welcome to Pop Culture Weekly with Kyle McMahon from iHeartRadio. Your pop culture news, views, reviews, and celebrity interviews on all the movies, TV, music, and pop culture you crave weekly. Here's Kyle McMahon. Na na na. Hello. And welcome to episode 82 of Pop Culture Weekly with Kyle McMahon. I, of course, am Kyle McMahon, and I thank you so much for listening. You know, I cannot do this show without you. You make it what it is. You make it grow every week. Please, please, please keep those Apple Podcast reviews coming. It is really helping grow the show, and that means more artists, more guests, more directors, more actors and actresses, and uh, you know, TV stars and all that good stuff. And it's all because of you. So today we have a very cool lineup of guests. First up is Leslie Grossman from American Horror Story. And if you're not watching American Horror Story season 10, double feature one, what is wrong with you? Two, this season is so good. And it's like kind of split in two. It's kind of two stories in one season. And Leslie is in both of them in the first half of the season, the first story. Uh, it is, ooh, I can't say much if you haven't watched it yet, but she is delicious in her role. And, of course, I loved her in last season's uh, uh, 1984 season as well. Um, that She is just so good. I love her characters. I love what she does with them. So I talked to her, and then I talked to the one and only, the legendary, one of the most awarded and best-selling songwriters of all time, the one and only Diane Warren. I talked to her, uh, one, because she's amazing, but two, she is going to be honored at Film Fest 919, which you know is my favorite film festival. I go every year, and I wouldn't miss it for the world this year. Um, and Diane is being honored in a very, very special tribute on Mondays, uh, depending on when you're listening to it. Or I should say she'll be honored at the Monday uh, programming day, Monday evening. So you can go to filmfest919.com. That's filmfest919.com and get all of the programming and tickets. And it is such and when I say such an incredible film festival, you know I ain't lying. Uh, if I'm raving about it, you know I love it. And it's in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The passes are extremely affordable, and you get to see the films before they catch on. I mean, I remember their first year, they highlighted Roma. Roma! You remember, you know, right here on this very show, me raving about Roma, and that's because I had seen it at its premiere at Film Fest 919. And then, of course, you know, four months later, it went on to sweep the Academy Awards, the Oscars. So Film Fest 919 is where you see these films before they blow up. Anyway, we'll have all the Film Fest 919 coverage you could want next week. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to speak to Leslie Grossman all about American Horror Story. Let's get in with it. Not get in with it? Let's get on with it. Well, that sounds like I'm not excited. Let's talk with Leslie Grossman. All right. I am here with the one and only Leslie Grossman. I'm so excited to talk to you. Thank you for joining me on iHeartRadio's Pop Culture Weekly. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Of course. So am I. And so there's so much to talk to you about. And and so I'd like to start at the beginning of your American Horror Story universe career. 
You sure. went into Ryan Murphy's uh, universe through Popular. Is that right? Correct. And then he just loved you so much, as we all did, that he brought you over <laughs> to AHS? Yeah. I mean, you know, Ryan, I met Ryan through the casting process for Popular, and we became instant pals. And I did that show for two years. That was the first series I had ever done. And, um, you know, I went off and did other things. Ryan did other things. And, you know, what? the funny thing is, in my friendship with Ryan, we almost never, ever talked about work. Uh, it was always just about us being pals and buddies. And I never expected to be on another one of his shows. And, you know, I certainly never thought I'd be plugged into the horror story universe. And uh, he called me and said, hey, I think that this would be something interesting for you to try. And I was like, OK. And I didn't think it was going to turn into four seasons. And it has. And it's been the most fun and has brought so much to my life personally, professionally, in every way possible. So it's been a total joy, the whole thing. Well, and and I've loved watching you. And you started out on, uh, was it Cult? Was that Correct. your first season? Which mm -hmm. was a nice, juicy role. Actually, you've really had juicy roles every season that you've been on. I have. I've gotten to do lots of crazy, insane, <laughs> disgusting, awful, hilarious things. And it's always insane. It's always a ride. But now I've become like habituated to it so that when now I do like a different job, I'm always like, that, that's it. Like I'm not. <laughs> but now, now I kill them. Now right. they throw blood on me and like, nope, we're just having a conversation. So I'm now like addicted to the high of working on Horror Story. I love it. And, you know, up until this current season, Double Feature, my favorite role of yours was 1984. That was um, fun. It, yeah. I mean, that was so much fun. It was like this overgrown child <laughs> in, you know, in this like. I don't even know how to describe her, but she was insane and Banana amazing. Banana town. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Cuckoo crazy <laughs> puff. Yeah. Psychotic <laughs> serial killer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But, but, and, it, and it just creepy too. You know what I mean? Just like a creepy person, yeah. not you, obviously <laughs> your character, but yes, a real weirdo, a real creepy, awful weirdo. And mm -hmm. now for double feature, I mean, so part one just recently ended uh, mm -hmm. and Ursula, oh my God. So Ursula has now beat, beat cult for me um, wow. it, because this, she is, and I guess we can talk about this now because yeah, that part aired. of the season has aired, but wow, I loved her at first because she just reminded <laughs> me of so many people that, you know, I've met in sure. uh in the industry and mm -hmm, me too uh, <laughs> yeah yeah i'm sure yep and um and then i was like you know i really need her for my agent because my agent doesn't do <laughs> half the stuff that she does um, sure. and then uh and then there was the whole addiction and pill thing and this kind of masterminding mm -hmm. and i was like oh well maybe if they can get me a good cut you know maybe i can still deal <laughs> with that but uh, <laughs> but she is such a juicy layered character you know at first i thought that she was just going to be you know this agent that's just com you know committing him to write and write and write which she was but obviously she had an even more uh sinister plan at, at whatever costs that that happened what was yeah. it like playing her um it was an absolute joy. I'll be perfectly honest. I mean, did you hear those lines I got to say and those incredible <laughs> words that Ryan Murphy and Brad Falchuk and the other writers gave me to say, which are so fun? Um, I think, you know, Ursula ultimately is really a terrible, awful, evil husk of a human being. And when it comes right down to it, she <laughs> collaborated with a minor child to get rid of of Harry's wife, Doris, so that Harry could be unencumbered to just do what he needed to do to earn her as much money as she could possibly make. So what a terrible, awful human being, but it is really fun to get to play parts where I say things to people that I would never ever in a million years get to say to people to their faces in real life. And uh, I also really enjoyed working with Ryan Kira Armstrong, who played Alma, who's a wonderful, wonderful actress. And she was so much fun to play with. And it was, I mean, there was a one point in the middle where I was like, wow, um, my character is collaborating with a child. That <laughs> seems terrible. But the thing I love about Ursula is all bets are off. Who cares? It's all a means to an end to get what she needed and get what she wanted. So 
I have to say it was the most fun. I really liked it. And also I just, I got to work with Finn who's so brilliant and Lily, which was so great. And it was just such a good experience. It was really super rewarding. Yeah. And I'll tell you as a viewer, it was so rewarding. I was on the edge of my seat. It is so good. I really loved this one. I loved episode three and episode five in particular, I thought were amazing. Yeah. You know, and as you said, the cast was just absolutely phenomenal. Everybody did so, uh, brought so much to their characters that it was so much more. And I was worried because I'm like, you know, it's kind of half of the time of uh, typical time to tell the story. And um, no, these people were deeply rich and and we got to see them flaws and all, mostly flaws. I'm so glad you (laughs) liked it. Good, good, good. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And I've got to say, you know, with (laughs) Ursula, I mean, she really, and you know, as we watched the season unfold, she became more and more of this key component of driving everything that was you know, essentially happening and then taking it to, as agents tend to try to do, taking it to the next level. Um, Yeah. Let's ride the train till the wheels fall off. Uh Literally, literally. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about that ending? I I was like, wow, that is not where I thought it was going to (laughs) go. Well, the thing I love about Horror Story is you never know which way it's going to go. And that was, I didn't know how it was going to end either. We were deep into shooting before I got that end thing. But I have to say when Ryan called me and told me that Alma was going to rip her father's throat out that I, I screamed, (laughs) I really did scream because that is as gnarly and ruthless and intense as anything I could possibly imagine. And, you know, Ryan with her sweet, adorable face, you know, just (laughs) attacking her father. I just thought it was sort of, hilarious and insane and crazy and i was here for it you know i thought it was really kind of delicious in that awful horrifying way absolutely and she she is and and, and this is a testament to her acting she is a powerhouse i mean she was creeping me out and the funny thing is she is the most normal regular adorable sweetheart cutie pie you ever met and then as soon as that camera rolls she would lock into that character and become that person and then as soon as they yelled cut she'd be like do you want to see what i drew Aww. like she's <laughs> the sweetest i had such a good time with her i really really did and i mean she's already i think she's done like four movies since we wrapped wow. and she is someone you're going to be hearing a great deal from and just a terrific person and a really gifted actor really gifted that's incredible, and it's and it showed on screen. Yeah. And, and now for and I'm you know I don't know what we can say or can't say for part two, Death Valley, but mm-hmm. I do know that you are playing a doctor, and that first, maybe not. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. You know, people. I don't know how those things get out there. Oh, okay. Theories get out there, but <laughs> I mean, I don't. I can't tell you what happens, but I can tell you she is not a doctor. I don't know where that. Came okay, from, but awesome. She, but I know that's been floating out there. No, she is not. But see, keep going. Keep asking. <laughs> well, the I you know watched the first episode, which was delicious, and yeah. I love the back and forth between the past and uh, yeah. the present. Very, very interesting storytelling. And I am on this is very different, in my opinion, for American Horror Story. And I am super intrigued by this. What can you tell me? (laughs) Well, you know that there's only so much I can say. Of course. I don't want to get in trouble. Of course. Um, I can say that I think it's really clever and smart and out there. And uh, I think Sarah Paulson as Mamie Eisenhower is just the greatest thing ever. Um, I, 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 I think it's fun. I think it's a lot of fun. I think there's going to be a lot of fun things for people to figure out. Um, I also just think it's incredible that season after season and that this being double feature. So it's one season with two separate ideas that there's just always something completely different and totally new. That is not easy. Uh, to keep coming up with totally novel ideas and Ryan does it every year. So I, I think it's, I think it, it gets crazy and I think it's fun. I cannot wait and I cannot wait to see how it all unfolds. I cannot wait to see you and, um, and are you good? Is more AHS in your future? You know, I have no idea. I always say 
if Ryan invites me to the party, I go to the party happily with bells on. I don't know. I don't think he has, I don't know what the idea is for next year. I have no idea. So who knows? <laughs> Stay tuned. Maybe yes, maybe no, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Stay tuned. Well, whatever it is that you do next, I cannot wait to see it. And as I said, I can't wait to see how part two of season 10 unfolds with Death Valley. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it, Leslie. Thank you so much. It was nice to talk to you. You as well. Okay, obsessed with her, absolutely love her. She is amazing, and if you are not watching American Horror Story Season 10, double feature, you really, really, really need to watch it. Uh, The second half of the season just started, and you can jump right in or start at the beginning of the season and catch the first half, which is a whole, its own story in itself. I love her, love her every season she's on, and I can't wait to see what comes of her in this season of American Horror Story Season 10 Double Feature. All right. This holiday season, we all wish for hope and healing. Children and families who spend their holidays at the hospital deserve a reason to believe in first steps, in giggles, high fives, and hugs. For 150 years, Children's National Hospital has provided world-class care and groundbreaking research. Please donate today to help patients and healthcare heroes this holiday season. Visit childrensnational.org holiday. That's childrensnational.org holiday. Now. This next guest, I mean, I don't even know, like, what do you even say about somebody so legendary? She is, uh, oh my God, a songwriter, musician, record producer. She really kind of blew up in 1985 with Rhythm of the Night by DeBarge. This is the rhythm of the night. She's so amazing. She became the first songwriter in, she became the first songwriter in history to have seven different songs, all by different artists, on the singles chart at the same exact time. The same exact time. Seven different hits on the charts by seven different artists at the same time. She has written nine number one songs, 32 top 10 songs on the Billboard Hot 100, including Because You Loved Me, Celine Dion, Because You Love Me, uh, If I Could Turn Back Time, Cher, If I Could Turn Back Time, uh, How Do I Live, Leanne Rhymes, How Do I Live Without You, Oh, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing by Aerosmith. And I don't want to miss a thing. I don't know why that still sounded like Cher, but whatever. Uh, She is just incredible. She's won a Grammy, an Emmy, two Golden Globes, three consecutive Billboard Music Awards for Songwriter of the Year, nominated for 12 Academy Awards, and has been inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame, has her own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. She is absolutely incredible, and I love her. And I've loved her since she came out. Let's talk with the one, the only, Diane Warren. All right. So I am here with the one and only. I mean, I, I, there's so many things to say about you. 12-time Oscar. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 12 time Oscar nominee, uh, one of the greatest songwriters of all time, one of the most celebrated songwriters of all time. Nine number one songs, 32 top 10 hits, the one and only Diane Warren. Thank you so much for speaking with me. Thank you for having me. Of course. So I want to talk to you about uh, Film Fest 919 as well as um, your album, your debut album. But if you don't mind, I'd like to go back for a little bit uh, to ask you, you know, I love your work is so incredible. And um, so from my you know, what I'm curious to know is what got you into music in the first place as a songwriter? I just love music and it was what I wanted to do. It's kind of as simple as that and was passionate about it and decided this is what I was going to do and, and never looked back and never had a plan B and just worked hard. And, and it's what I continue to do. It's all about, 
you know, you need to, if you have talent, you know, which, you know, you have to be born with some, some amount of talent, but you have to work at that talent. You have to work at your craft. So I do that every day in my life. And, and your body of work is so varied. You've worked with artists, you know, country and pop and uh, even some hip hop and, and rock. Is yeah. there, or when you're writing these songs, do you have that, you know, genre in mind or do you just write and whatever comes out, comes out? I mean, I've just always written songs in, in all kinds of genres. I think, you know, most songwriters, are usually in one kind of area, whether they're pop or whether they're in hip hop or, or you know urban music or country, and, or Latin. And I've just a rock, <laughs> but I've always you know always been in all worlds. And you know, to me, you know, it's all about writing a great song, no matter what what genre it is. You know, and a great song is is doesn't have a genre and it doesn't have a time, right? It, it it will live in any genre and live in any time. You know, and I think and my album, you know, we're talking about my album. It's almost like a microcosm of that one. I agree, obviously, so much, but it's, it's especially interesting to me because I feel like as a um, fan of music, you know, I like different genres and I feel like all too often the business pigeonholes uh, artists into, well, no, you can't do a song like that. You know, that's, you're a pop act, you know, you can't. It's crazy. But the way kids listen to music now and, you know, Everybody listens to all genres. You know, they make up their own playlists. You know, radio is pretty. You know, some stations. You know, we're a country station. We're a hip hop station. We're, we're, you know, like, but people are listening. You know, in, in 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 life, they're listening to everything. You know, I my friends' kids are listening to classic rock and you know, and country and hip hop at the same time. So, and then you have these genres that that are mixing naturally, and that's happening in my music. I mean, I did the song I did on Ty Dolla Sign, "Drink You Away," is basically a country song. I wanted a country hip hop song and I wanted to give it to somebody that you would never expect to do a song like that. You know, so that was fun. I love that. And, you know, I just got back, I, uh, was doing um, a feature with Firefly Festival, which is a four-day festival uh, over the weekend. And the lineup, in my opinion, is starting to really reflect, you know, people's, especially the industry's acceptance that, okay, wait a second, maybe maybe people do listen to different things. You know, there was uh, Lizzo yeah. was the headliner um, last night and Tame Impala the night before. And, you know, so it's, it's I think, starting to to the industry doesn't have a choice really anymore you know yeah um do you have a preference in genres when you're writing songs you know are you like uh partial to one genre over another or are you just i just like writing great songs and every now and then i achieve that you know so it's just about I just love I love doing this and no matter what genre it is you know I'm, I'm the one I'm writing like today is like like it's almost like a Latin hip-hop kind of thing so that's kind of different you know um something I wrote last week was kind of an Afrobeat song you know and then what I write next will be totally different than that so it's always just you know bringing new you know flavors into what I do and, and just continuing or even if it's what I normally do just getting better at it how often are you writing you're just writing every day yeah. all day I'm not, yeah, I mean, basically every day, you know, Sundays, half a day, you know, but, but basically every day, you know, but I'm doing other things. So I'm, I'm writing and I have a meeting and then I have, have, I'm in the studio with an artist or something, you know, there's other things going on. And then now I'm promoting my records. So I have, you know, I, I, I it's the first time I've ever had to do, you know, so much promo. So <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's a different thing and it's all over the world too, because um, like there's a bunch of Latin press I'm doing for my single Seaside which is Rita Ora, Sofia Reyes, and, and Rake, who are a huge Latin um, group. And, um, and, and Sofia is a huge, amazing Latin artist. And Rita Ora, of course, is an international, huge artist. So I'm doing stuff in all different territories. And it's, since it's my record, I'm kind of, you know, the, the front person of it, which is weird for me, you know? Why was this the right time to do a debut album, which, by the way, is called Diane uh, Diane Warren, The Cave Sessions, Volume One. Why? Why was the time right now? Why not? <laughs> you know, it was just like I the idea had been percolating in my brain since all these kind of DJs do it. You know, um, it's usually producer DJs. And I thought, let's you know, let's have the songwriter version. Let's have it be me. You know, so 
you know, and, I, and, if, and it'll be a great way to showcase all the different styles I'm in. I mean, you wouldn't know the same person that wrote, you know, the G-Easy Santana song, She's Fire, wrote the John Legend ballad, you know, Where's Your Heart, or that the same person wrote the Pentatonix John Batiste song, Sweet, or the, you know, you know, or wrote, you know, I mean, they're all, the songs are also different, or wrote the Mary Morris song, you know, it's all over the place. And, and, and I agree. I think it's I think it's incredible. And I love that you do that, you know, because as you said, so many producers and, and DJs do it. Why they don't not write the songs by themselves? What'd you say? And they don't write the songs by themselves. Right. So. Right. Uh, and you have a song on there. Somehow you do with uh, Reba, which is your third time working with her. It's not on my album. It's it'll be on Reba's album, and it's from the Glenn Close, um, Neil Coombs movie, Four Good Days, which is an amazing movie about drug addiction, which is a real a real problem in America right now, opioid addiction. And I wrote the song Somehow You Do for that movie, and I wrote it as a song about hope. So. You know, through whatever through whatever hard times you're going through within that movie, it's about the subject matter in that movie. You know, everybody's going through hard times, and this is a song about that. You know what? When you think that you can't do it, some way, somehow, somehow you do. So I'm excited about that. And yeah, I, it's the third song I've done with Reba. Probably my favorite. And definitely my favorite. When you are writing, you know, whether it's for your album or for a soundtrack, is this? Do you put yourself in the character? of uh, you know the 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 voice of of who yeah. we're listening to or yeah. is it from yeah. experience I, I i write that song to fit that movie to fit like to tie in to tie it in to tie just emotionally i just kind of connect with that movie and i write the song that i want to hear and either in that movie or at the end of that movie you know so it's kind of like it's like some directors say they make the movie they want to see you know i write the songs i want to hear and 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 I write the song in a movie that I want to hear at the end of that movie. And so Film Fest 919, which is my favorite film fest uh, ever, um, is coming up very soon. And you are getting a very special award, the Spotlight Award, um, on Monday, October 18th. And you are going to be um, celebrated once again, this time at Film Fest 919. There's going to be a uh, moderated conversation. And um, we're, we're going to be hearing about your work uh, in in song and, you know, so many of, of our favorite films. What is that like for you to kind of, do it with the lens of talking about your career i mean you know i like to talk you know yeah i mean i'm always what's interesting for me personally is what is what i'm doing what i'm what's yet to come you know it's cool to talk about i know i'm proud of of what i've achieved in, in the songs and, and the songs in these movies and things like that but i'm what's always interesting to me is what i'm doing now and what's coming and i'm doing a lot of really exciting things and there's a lot of good stuff coming so we'll talk about all of it Awesome. And you have uh, actually uh, an, another song featured in a documentary that's playing at Film Fest 919, The Mustangs. Uh, yeah. And that song is performed by Blanco Brown. Yeah, Can you tell called, me a little bit about that? Yeah, it, that that's called um, um, Never Gonna Tame You. And, you know, it's a song that, that I was inspired by, you know, the plight of these horses and, you know, these wild Mustangs. Are, they're, they're, they are America, you know. And what, what's happening to them is terrible. Um, and they, they need to be free, just like we need to be free. And when I, when I wrote that song, I wrote it, you know, obviously about those, the horses, but then outside that movie, it came about, about all of us, you know, because we're all, no one's us, you know, you've got to live free, you've got to live your life, um, whether, whether you have four legs or two, you know. Um, and Blanco, his vocal on that is one of the best vocals I've ever heard in my entire life, ever. Wow. I don't know how he hit those notes, but he did. So he's going to be doing the video soon. And be cool to wow. I I'm looking forward to that. Oh, and get me now. I'm sorry. When there's sirens, I said they're coming to get me. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to hearing the song and seeing the Mustangs at Film Fest 919. I'm also looking forward to you receiving the Spotlight Award Thank Monday, you. October 18th. And I can't wait to meet you, Diane. Thank you so much for speaking with me. Thank you. Good to talk to you. Good to See talk you to you. Bye. See you there.
Guys, I just had Diane Warren on my show. Diane Warren. I freaking love her. I just, I, you know, you guys have are making my dreams come true, and I can't thank you enough for that. She has been one of my favorite songwriters forever, and she deserves all of the success that she's had. Uh, by the way, besides the songs that, you know, I've talked about, she did Music of My Heart with NSYNC and Gloria Estefan. Music of my heart. There you'll be from Pearl Harbor, Faith Hill. And everywhere I look, there you'll be. She's just, I. it's just insane the amount of hits. Oh, by the way, Michael Bolton. How can we be lovers if we can be friends? <laughs> this isn't my first time singing that song on this show. Uh, Unbreak My Heart. Unbreak my heart. Say you love me again. Uh, what else? Uh, just, um, uh, oh my God. I, there's so many I can't even pick. I'm looking at this list and I just love them all. Love Will Lead You Back. Love Will Lead You Back. Someday I just know that love will lead you back in my arms. Uh, you haven't seen The Last of Me, which was Cher from, um, what was that movie? It was so good. Uh, not stripping. <laughs> what the heck was the movie called? Br- uh, br- oh my goodness. This is why I need a co-host. Um, what was that movie with Cher where she's burlesque? There you go, burlesque. Um, you haven't seen the last of me. Just, she is just an icon. She is an icon of music and pop culture, and we don't deserve her. And let's not forget, she just released her first album. I mean, like, you know, nearly 40 years in the business, or, or more than 40 years in the business, and she just released her first album. Diane Warren, The Cave Sessions, Volume 1. And, I mean, it has times like this with Darius Rucker, She's Fire, g Easy, Carlos Santana, Rita Ora, Sofia Reyes. I mean, just an awesome album, which, of course, you can get wherever you get your music legally, just like on the iHeartRadio app. All right. All right. So the head is our show for today. And for this week, I should say. And uh, thank you, as always, for being here with me. I love being here with you. I love that you guys are here with me. Please keep on hitting me up on social. Keep sending your emails. Keep sending me your hate mail when you're angry. I try to read it all. Can't respond to it all, but I do try. And keep sharing the show to your socials, to your friends, to your family, uh, you know, it really, really, really is helping grow the show every single week. And I can not thank you enough for it. All right. Next week, it's all about Film Fest 919. Film Fest 919. And I will have the uh, the your Film Fest 919 coverage live on our socials and, of course, on popcultureweekly.com. So be sure to check out my socials and popcultureweekly.com all next week for your Film Fest 919 coverage. All right. Guys, I interviewed Diane Warren. I can't believe it. All right. Love you. We out. Thank you for listening to Pop Culture Weekly. Hear all the latest at popcultureweekly.com. How do I live without you? I want to know. How do I breathe without you? If you ever go, how do I ever, ever survive? Oh, God, that's a little bit out of tune. We should have done another take of that one. Spark innovation across your federal agency with IT hardware, software, and services from Connection Public Sector Solutions. Your technology procurement challenges will meet their match as Connection's dedicated account managers offer exceptional customer service and our extensive list of supported federal contracts means you'll always get a price that works for your budget. Learn more about innovation for your agency with Connection Public Sector Solutions at connection.com slash fedcontracts. 
When we talk about McDonald's combo meals, we talk about savory meat, golden fries, and your favorite drink. Now, the combo meals just got crispy, juicy, and tender with the new crispy chicken sandwich combo. And you have to try it. Get a classic or spicy crispy chicken sandwich with medium fries and a medium soft drink like Sprite for only six bucks. Promotion pricing may be lower than meal pricing. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba.